Hello and welcome back and that is right today we're going to talk about DIY NAS upgrades and I say DIY a lot of the things we're going to talk about in today's video on this mess of a table that I've got here in front of me can actually be used on turnkey NAS solutions QNAP, Solange, Asus, U, Green, Terramaster, blah 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 but it has to be said that predominantly all of these are going to be about DIY NAS builds utilizing software such as TrueNAS or Unraid or OMV and many of these you may have heard of in fact the whole reason this video exists is because because I've made so many videos about different upgrades for your NAS, a few users, and one in particular, reached out to say, can you just make one video that covers them all as quickly as you can? And that's why this video exists, because one, shut up, you're not my real dad. Secondly, it's actually a very interesting point. There are so many little tiny upgrades out there and deviations of logic that comes into some of these upgrades especially with M.2, that some of these may have slipped past you. And if you've heard of every single one of these by the end of the video, please in the comments tell me, largely because I refuse to accept that anyone has heard of all of these, or at least been hands-on with all of these as much as I have. So without further ado, let's crack on with some of these nifty little upgrades. So let's tackle what I think to be the most interesting area of DIY NAS upgrades that have kind of evolved over the last few years, and that is, have we've seen MATX and ATX motherboards, at least in terms of network attack storage deployment get less and less popular and I know there's going to be some of you that disagree with that by the way but when it comes to more compact uh, compact deployment it's kind of a fact um, when you look at MITx motherboards like this one you're losing out on PCIe upgrades so with PCIe slots getting you know lesser and lesser such as this one the N100 board that's got a 10g there so therefore that PCIe slot had to get you know leveraged out across the lanes and you got two M.2 slots M.2 becomes the de facto entry point for a lot of those upgrades. So with that in mind, we can look at some of the ones we've already talked about on the channel. Probably one of the most interesting, at least in terms of ease of deployment, is one like this. This is an M.2 to 10GBE adapter, utilizing one of your 10G, uh, sorry, one of your PCIe upgrade slots there with a ribbon at the other end. I know I dropped it, so I'm gonna tell me off for that. Uh, once you've got that connected inside your system, you've then got a 10G output. Now, depending on the M.2 slot you've got based on the gen and the speed, you may be thinking I'm losing out on some of that bandwidth there well for those of you that want to leverage a lot more of the bandwidth afforded to an m.2 slot that is perhaps at times two or times four speed that's when you look at something like this this is an m.2 to pcie upgrade slot now there's going to be some of you that are immediately going to say m.2 is at times four speed and you're right even though this is a time 16 slot there's absolutely no way you're going to achieve time 16 but keep in mind notwithstanding that gen 4 lanes are going to give you two gigabytes per second bandwidth per la uh, per you know times one times two times four but on top of that some cards that you're going to plan to use in those slots need a physical or at least a cut pcie slot to enjoy those cards for example we have got a couple of graphics cards over here which let's be honest if you did want to scale up your proxmox system you know with pcie pass through or you want to take advantage of a plex media server and bump things up down the road with an affordable non-external power um uh, integrated uh, uh pcie graphics card you're not going to be able to do that on an MITx motherboard that lacks the PCIe slot. A riser like this will allow you to do that. But because of increased development in M.2 controllers to sort of branch out what can be done with what is effectively a PCIe minimized outlet, it has to be said that that innovation is not just limited to the M.2 slot. This is an M.2 to USB to PCIe output here. Now I know you're immediately thinking, what on earth is the difference between this and the riser? Well, part of this is to do with the ease of an external. So say for example, you are running a deployable system that's got an M.2 in an incredibly compact space that lacks the PCIe slots physically built into the casing. This is where you're able to use an external PCIe via just USB there, but the logic can be extended beyond that thanks to the uh, kind of uh, enhanced development on those PCIe M.2 controllers there. This, for example, is a phenomenal adapter here that we've already been sent from IOCrest. This is a PCIe USB adapter. This takes advantage of USB 4 and this goes in to USB 4 port on your server system and allows you to add a PCIe card and if you look really closely you can see why it's an M.2 PCB that has a PCIe built onto the M.2 board there this allows you to have an external PCIe card on your system like this one which has got two M.2s and a 10 GBE 
connected to your system via an available USB port there. That's what I mean about the logic that's expanded beyond M.2 PCIe controller development moving out of just simple storage there. We could talk more about the um, utilization of M.2 to multiple SATA ports. We talked about that before. And even then, we can talk about how the M.2 key that's traditionally used for Wi-Fi has evolved as well. What do I mean by that? Well, the M.2 key, and again, technically all M.2s come under that heading, but specifically on many systems you find a small M.2 that can only really have space for this. This is a little Wi-Fi adapter there. This is an, uh, a Wi-Fi 7 M.2 adapter there. This was pretty cheap. I think it was about 20, 25 nicker. And this allows you to add Wi-Fi 7 to your system. It doesn't have the antennae, but you might have existing antennae that you can clip on there to the top. And luckily, innovation on that M.2 key there has improved as well. Adapters like this one. This allows you via an M.2 key to add two further SATA interfaces to your motherboard. And that extends, by the way, to other options as well. The line does get a bit blurry between standard M.2 and the M.2 key you might use for your Wi-Fi connection there. And there's even risers and ZIF cables to expand upon it. And they do kind of detail a little bit more what works and what doesn't. But the sheer level of change that in things you can do with an M.2 slot that you've got knocking around, even the more smaller form factor one that may be living underneath another one if you use a riser cable, is pretty darn impressive. And the number of options out there from different retailers is is still bloody impressive for scaling up the storage on your NAS. Continuing with that subject of storage, we can look at something like this. This is, you know, a bog standard PCIe to SATA adapter. I remember for the longest time, when it came to increasing storage on your NAS system in the bygone era, this is pretty much it in terms of adding more storage. You had to keep adding SATA cards. Luckily, now moving forward into the future, so much has changed. Now, some of it is wildly expensive. For example, this is the OWC accelerator card there, and this card here has got eight Gen 4 M.2 NVMe slots inside on a Gen 4 PCIe. You can add a crap load of storage to your system there, but again, look at the size of this frigging card it's going to take up so much room luckily modern development really answered the call we could look at that card we mentioned earlier on this is that card from qnap the qm2 series there they've got two and four m.2 nvme slot cards here that also have 10 gbe ports there on the rear but it kind of scales up more than that not notwithstanding that you can go ahead and just get standard m.2 uh, m laden cards in gen 4 and gen 3 that connect to a pcie slot but on top of that you can also get u.2 adapters cards some of these also go up to gen 4 as well i don't know if there's any gen 5 ones in the market but this will allow you if you do have an available pcie slot and you want to take advantage of a larger capacity but faster SSD drive, little flash U.2 and U.3 perhaps is available or at the very least in development thanks to those controllers being innovated upon. But you don't have to go that far out if you want to scale up your storage a little bit. You know, 2.5 inch to 3.5 inch SATA adapters have existed for a long time. But ones like this from the QNAP QNA series here has got RAID built into it. That means that with this, you can take advantage of a couple of affordable, smaller capacity SATA SSDs. Use the RAID 0 controller or RAID 1 controller inside to then output directly into SATA and therefore get enhanced storage capacity but also speed via a single 3.5 inch SATA interface. More so than that, you can take advantage of another part of the Q&A series. This is a two times M.2 to U.2 output there. That's right. This will allow you to attach a couple of M.2s with their Gen 3 speeds and output them via that SAS connector there. There is a lot to like about this. And again, inbuilt RAID controller. And changing tack ever so slightly, let's talk about power because a lot of you are running very, very modest NAS build. Whether it is that you're utilizing it as an overhead from a larger, dumber storage server or you're running a NAS system where the priority is storage rather than system power, your draw is going to be a lot lower. And although there are external PSUs in the market, those little barrel connected ones, and you can get bigger internal PSUs, I think some users are rocking out that with systems that can run on 65 watt or even less PSUs. Now, for the sake of clean, you know, line up around the power consumption of the devices in your market, in your network setup, and again, this isn't going to be for everyone, but I wanted to include it, you can get things like this. These are 100 watt rated USB-C power adapter converters here. These allow you to use standard USB power supplies and then convert them into 
power for your NAS system. You can reuse these. Now keep in mind, you're gonna need to get at least a 65 watt power delivery and there are 100 watt and higher power delivery USBs out there. Again, it is based on USB architecture. Ugreen, I've got a few of them. And these aren't gonna be for everyone, but I wanted to include them in the list for those of you running incredibly modest or uh, micro ITX NAS deployments or even some of those PFSense router boxes that can be scaled out towards NAS. Circling back to USB support on a lot of modern NAS systems now, we're seeing more and more DIY NAS build motherboards rocking out with USB on board and the compliance and compatibility of USB 4 and of course Thunderbolt 4 being integrated slowly but surely into the world of NAS. I do think it's worth talking a little bit more about what that means long term. So for example, time was if you wanted to take advantage of USB for network adapters, the number of range of options out there weren't great. You can get a USB to multi-port adapters if you choose, but the level of support and compatibility is negligible. On the other hand, you could get USB to five gig adapters. This is a Wise DPI uh, $30 USB to five gigabit ethernet adapter. Now that's half of 10 GBE just connecting it. The driver support is slowly growing and not all NAS brands support it. I know the driver I could find from a previous 2.5 gig adapter actually worked when using this in Unraid as well as a slightly patchy unofficial Synology NAS build there. You can take advantage of that, but the USB 4 connectivity, it has to be said, has really opened the gates. We already talked earlier on about the USB 4 to uh, PCIe upgrade PCB um, adapter there which does open the door to PCIe upgrade cards again you can look at larger capacity cards 25 gig and 40 gig keep in mind you've only got 40 gigabits per second to play with there so again and of course driver compatibility is a question but USB 4 and Thunderbolt 4 connectivity support means that you can take advantage of things like this this is the Sonic Solo 10G that allows you to attach with bus power via a Thunderbolt connection and add a 10 GBE upgrade slot. OS support is going to be a big factor here, but that does, again, open the door to external upgrades on your NAS without tinkering. And again, if you're running a very compact, compact system, that's gonna be hugely beneficial. But on top of that, something we don't talk about enough here on the channel is bloody Oculink. I know a number of you have always been shouting it at the screen this whole time. When I talk about USB 4 and external connectivity, we can talk about Oculink. If USB 4 brings 40 gig to the party, Oculink, at least in its traditional form at the moment, is 64 gigabits per second or 6.4 gigabytes per second. Don't get mathematical on me. Now, something like this, this is from Ustar. This is an Oculink and USB 4 connected four times NVMe external DAS box there. Again, at the moment, we've tested it on Ustar's uh, mini PC NAS system that we did a conversion on and it worked. Is wide compatibility on other systems? I'm not sure about the driver support, but this is going to become a lot more common. Now that Oculink and USB 4 ports are becoming very, very desirable, external GPUs and more. Let's be honest, if I wanted to, I could really get into the weeds here on this subject with the number of adapters and upgrades out there for DIY and turnkey NAS solutions is genuinely phenomenal. And for my part, I think exciting. I mean, I haven't even talked on memory upgrades. I've not talked, for example, about, you know, SFP to copper adapters, something we've talked about in the channel before. I've not talked about things like this, this from Minis Forum. This is a prototype upgrade here that they're working on to turn the Minis Forum MS-01 from a three NVMe system into a six NVMe system and with NAS systems and server ready solutions arriving getting smaller and smaller all of which allowing you to really leverage a lot of the more efficient hardware in the market but therefore scoping down the ability for upgrades it is absolutely brilliant that right now there are just so so many kinds of ways to upgrade your server and they're getting smaller and cheaper too. But I think I'm going to wrap things up there. I think there are more things we could talk about, but I just wanted to merge as many into this video as per user request. If you are interested in any of the things that we talked about today, I'm going to link towards the video reviews for as many of these as I can find here on the channel, as well as links to get hold of these for yourself. If you are interested in getting hold of any of them, and if you found this video helpful, and more importantly, if you're going to go to any of the retailers listed below anyway, make sure those three things are true, please use the links in the description to get hold of them. Using those results in a small commission coming here to me and Eddie here at NAS Compares is genuinely just us and it allows us to keep doing what we do the free support section more reviews all of it but that's up to you thank you so much for watching and have yourselves a fantastic week